Hello, guys. Hello. I just want to come to you and talk about how to start a bookkeeping business. Okay, so this is one of the, one of the most asked questions. Okay, I've actually seen this on on this website called um, Answer the Public, and it's just so many different variations of the exact same question, right? Because it's it's very hard. It's like how to actually get started, and a lot of people, when I think they're looking at how to start. You know the the surface level of how to start be like you know you get your llc you get your website you get your insurances you get your business license you're ready to go how i'd really like to answer that question is we're not just talking about how to start but how to finish guys like how to make it all the way through how to actually make money how to make this like your full-time career how to make this you know a passive business if you want it have control okay so this is what this video is going to be about and my name is bryce tubbs i got started um, with my accounting and booking business about seven years ago and you know when i was first getting started like there was a lot of like twists and turns and, and a lot of complexity because it's one of those business models where it's easy when you know what you're doing it is incredibly complex when you don't because when you're first starting, sometimes you see people and it's like, you know, this is a service that every single business needs, right? Everyone needs clean books. Everyone needs, you know, their accounting. Everyone needs bookkeeping. But when you actually go to the market, generally the people you're going to have contact with are going to be the lowest, like, common denominator kind of people where it's like they're either just getting started and they have, like, zero dollars to the name or, you know, they're, they're a successful business owner, but they just don't value what you're doing. And it just kind of feels like you're pushing this, this boulder up a hill. And, you know, just you're fighting its gravity, you're fighting against a climb, and you're trying to push this, like, thousand-ton boulder up, right? So that's kind of why we're, 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 we're talking about this and how to actually do it. So we're going to be covering this inside of the video today. Now, before we do, though, if you want some help growing your accounting firm, your bookkeeping practice, okay, from someone who's been where you're trying to go, go ahead and click on the link inside the description below. So what we're going to do on this call is we're going to see, hey, where are you right now? And like, what's actually holding you back? Like, most people don't understand what you think is the reason why you're not really winning. Oftentimes, is not it, right? Sometimes you might think it's a marketing problem, and really it's a sales problem. You just can't close the deals at a high enough price point. Maybe you think you have a sales problem, you don't know how to sell, and really it's, you're not getting the right people on the phone, so it feels like you're talking to like people who just don't really understand it, right? So once we've dissected that, once we understand exactly what's causing that, next thing we're gonna do is like, where do you wanna go? Like, like what does this business look like? Like, how much money do you wanna make per month? How much do you wanna make per year? What do you really want to do? And then once you're able to do that, we can outline like, what does this look like for us to work together? Okay, so how are we gonna do this? What are the steps we're gonna take? What is all the work that's involved? And then if you think it makes sense for you, your life, your family, or your dreams, we can work together long-term inside of the program. Now the call is free and I cannot wait to see you on there. Now, anyways, let's go back. So how to start a bookkeeping business. Number one, guys, you have to really lock in your, your vision. So a lot of people, what happens is they have these goals of it's like, I just want to make as much money as possible or the sky's the limit. Those are generally the people that make the least amount of money when they're first getting started. I uh, A number of years ago, um, my, one of my uncles used to own a, um, a healthcare business. And he, he said to me, like, Bryce, you're treating this thing like a hobby. And I was like, what? What do you mean by that? He's like, you have no projections. You don't have any goals. You don't really know what, what you're doing. You're just trying to make money. And I was like, oh. And I kind of cut deep because before then I was like, you know, let's set these massive goals and like financial freedom and generational wealth and like all these cool buzzwords. But I didn't really have a straight path to getting there. I didn't even know what it looked like. So it's like I, you can't make a straight path if you don't even have a destination. A ship without a destination should not leave the harbor because it's going to meander all the way around and then it's going to run out of gas or run out of um, depending on what it is. I'm, I'm imagining you're having a speedboat because I'm trying to get there fast, not like one of those journey Voyager ships where it's wind powered. OK, they're just going to run out of gas in the middle of the ocean and you're not going to have any cell phone reception. So you're not going to be able to make a call. OK, instead, you need to start thinking, OK, so what is my goal? Do I want to make five grand a month, 10 grand a month? 12 grand a month? Do I want to just have a business where it replaced what I was like, what I was making my job? Do I want it to be like double what I was making my job? Do I want to be rich off of this? Do I want this thing to be like an asset that I build and then sell off? Do I like you need to know what this stuff looks like? And most people when they're getting started, they're only looking at the two feet in front of them. 
But really, you need to first take where where's the mountaintop? Like, am I even going in the right direction of the mountaintop? And then once you've done that, now you can go and start looking two feet in front of you. So that's number one. You got to know what you want. An easy goal and just a very safe goal that I like to um, recommend people in their first year in their first year in business is to try and get to either a hundred thousand a year or even even ten k per month. Okay, that's that's the baseline goal. Now, for a lot of people, that will put them, you know, in, in a good spot. Um, financially, or at least be able to replace what they're making in their current job. That's not for everybody. Like some people are really high up in corporate America, or you live in a very ex expensive, um, you know, state or um, province or country, right? But as a good rule of thumb, like like ten thousand per month or a hundred thousand per year is kind of a, a good baseline to shoot for. Now. Traditionally, most businesses do not make that much money in the first year. Most businesses make like, you know, between $10,000 to like $29,000. A lot of times you'll hear like million dollar business owners, they talk about their business like, yeah, it was so hard that first year, only made like $30,000, right? Versus when you know, when you have access to the internet, and you know how to use the internet correctly, it gives you more access to more people a lot faster. And then when you're able to do your pricing correct, it makes it way easier for you to be able to get there. So for example, like the number one thing I'd be doing is I'd be looking at both LinkedIn and Instagram, and I'd be just going and looking and researching like who are the biggest companies in your city. And I would almost try and have like, like just this um, spreadsheet from like highest to least. <laughs> and I know you're not gonna get exact quote and exact numbers, but I'm trying to go highest to least. Okay, so I'm looking at the industries that generally have more money. Okay, what most people start and like really struggle with is they choose industries where people are like really like solopreneurs or they're really small businesses. For example, like a lot of people like the trucking industry. Now, if you go after a logistics company that has a fleet of trucks, that is different than if you go after an individual con um, uh, an individual contractor like truck driver. Okay, the truck driver is generally going to be the guy or gal that pays you. 100 150 200 dollars a month the logistics company is the one that's going to pay you two thousand three thousand four thousand five thousand per month you got to go after the big players first and then you can start getting trickle down um effect of all their like so all, all the independent contractors are going to start coming and reaching out to you so now not only are you making five grand a month from the big company but now all of their you know subsidiaries and all of their different people are coming to you asking for help. A good example, this is my student, um, Lizzie. So she was working with this restaurant and she was getting um, severely underpaid. So she, the I, I give every, all of my students like a pricing calculator. And when she ran her existing client through the pricing calculator, she found out that it was worth about a thousand dollars per month for the amount of work she was doing. And when she was working at that existing um, restaurant, she was charging each location that she was working with $400 a month. Okay, so that means she was making about $800 total. When she ran it through the pricing calculator, she saw that, oh, each restaurant location is supposed to be about $1,000 per month based on the volume that they have going right now. So she should have actually been charging $2,000 total for the amount of work that she's getting. And then what she found was, oh, they're actually not happy with the current CPA. So she's a, a bookkeeper slash accounting professional. She's not like a CPA. So they had a CPA in place and they weren't happy. And that CPA was managing like, four other locations for them. So we basically devised this plan of talking to the owner to see if, you know, my student can go in there and be like, hey, I can do this for you, you know, better. And I would actually like care about it much more, I'd be much more responsive. And the dude's like, okay. And she got the remaining six or the remaining four locations after that. And she was able to raise the price on all the locations. So she got the price up to about $1,000 per month per store. And she got six stores. That's $6,000 per month when she used to be charging the same company $800 per month. And that's just going back to like, you need to go after like the, go after the um, industries that have the most earning potential, okay? So like maybe restaurants, constructions, solar um, solar panel companies, um, nonprofits, um, tech startups. You're either looking for who is hiring a lot of contractors, who hires, hires, hires a lot of contractors, or who has very large cash infusions? If you notice, actually, construction falls in, in between the middle, actually, because they're they're used to hiring contractors and like doing a lot of um job costing, right? And they're also really good at getting cash infusions because they're getting, you know, debt and loans to actually build um the stuff they're building, right? So they're actually really good in right in the middle. 
restaurants are cool because they have a lot of transactions in the past like restaurants used to be like really really tight with their money um, but nowadays if you can build that relationship it's a lot easier right why do we like solar solar power um because they overpay for everything solar companies overpay for everything <laughs> because they sell their their contracts and their projects at starting like ten thousand dollars per right so they can afford to pay you more money they just they're just so loose with their money who are some people that I would not be going for if I'm starting out? Okay, I'm not going after truckers. I'm not going after food trucks. I'm not going after um, like a photographer. I'm not going after solopreneurs, which is like them, their dog, and their computer. Okay, we're trying to go after the biggest companies first. And I'm not saying that you never work with these smaller guys. Like if they come through referrals, you can definitely do it. But if we only have a limited amount of time in our day, especially if you're working a full-time job, like I was when I was first starting my firm, you need to go after the bigger guys first. And if I had known this, it wouldn't have taken me 14 months to make, you know, to get up to 15 grand a month um, back when I was starting. It took me 14 months to have my first ever month where I had collected $15,000 in a month. And that was because, I spent the first six months struggling and I couldn't even charge like $400 a month because I was going to like these mom and pop shops who were like, um, and the city next to me, like I would go up main street and I would knock in, in, in the door and be like, Hey, you know, I I'm running, my, I'm running my accounting bookkeeping firm. I'm trying to get some clients. I'm trying to see if you need some, some help. You know, the service I do will help you grow your business. And I was like in this flower store and this lady's like, Oh, well, we don't want to grow our business. We're good at $40,000 a year. Um, you know, we, we don't really want to like, you know, have that stress of hiring contractors and going bigger, which we're just kind of good where we are. Walk next door, the guy owned a watch store. He had like, he had like probably like 50 watches in max and like a bunch of empty display cases. Yeah, uh, nah, 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 nah. I got a guy, I got a guy, right? Those are not the ones, but those are the ones that we have the most access to. Those are the ones that are closest. Those are the ones that are the most visible, who we can see. And then we just think, oh, well, you know, all I have to do is just go drop my flyers. And it's good because you will get some clients like that. You'll get clients for like $300, maybe $400 a month if you price your services like high. But if you really want to make a go at this, if you want to be able to go and make it to ten grand a month, you got to go after the big boys. When I say big boys, I don't mean like they're like this giant corporation you can get guys who are doing seven figures a year or even eight figures a year and they're still you know right right before they get to the behemoth mode they're starting to elevate and they're starting to move fast and they're just the best targets because they have money to spend they're growing so money is not really that big of a concern for them and they're willing to really work with you because they're growing and they want to work with businesses who are growing as well and that's how it actually gets started guys I would be one, making sure I have the vision. Two, making sure that I'm charging, you know, I'm charging in alignment with that goal. So I got to make sure I can charge those higher price points. Three, I got to make sure that I'm going after companies that have margin, have money, and have the willingness to spend money to grow their business. If you have those three things, it's going to put you... It's going to put you ahead of 90% of the businesses I speak to. Like, like I used to, um, probably about a year and a half ago, go through Facebook groups and I would just be answering people's questions. And that would be the biggest thing that I would see is they're just going after the people who are too small. And they'd be like, you know, I'm not making any money. I'm struggling. I, I can't leave my job. And it's just because like, if your target's wrong, you're working with two small guys and you don't have your pricing right, like you're, you're just not going to make it. It's, it's just so hard. So avoid all those steps and really go. Now, of course, there is a lot of trial and error along with that. Like, even though this business model is easy, it's easy once you know the steps. And once you know the steps, then you can just be very sequential and you can control your growth. Like, for example, Mike. Mike just grew his business by about $208,000 per year with one client that took one consultation call for him to sign that person up. And it's not that it was magic. It's not just like we do give him a great sales script and we do show him how to price out his stuff, but it's just he knows what to do. We've grown, we work together, we talk so much about what do you need to do in order to make this stuff work that he's he can just get clients like that. He's going to be at about $500,000 per year in revenue within the next three, probably within the next two to four months. Okay. He started being at $18,000 a month when he came into my mentorship program. Now, keep in mind, guys, 
we have different levels of the mentorship program. It's very custom to each individual. So we have people who in some cases are just starting or maybe they just graduated from like college or maybe they're working a corporate job and they're trying to like really launch and grow their business. Sometimes they might already have like one or two clients. Sometimes they might have zero clients and we help take them to their goal. Generally that goal is about $10,000 per month. Then we have more of like a mastermind where it's for people who are already at that, like, you know, 12 grand, 15, um, 20 grand a month. And they're trying to go to that, you know, half a million dollar per year mark. OK, so we do help a pretty wide range of people um, so far. We, we don't work with anyone who's already in seven figures yet. We will be in the future. But as of right now, like my specialty is more of getting them from like zero to about 500K per year. And that's kind of where I really want to master. And probably like two to three years from now, we're going to grow it. Now, all that to say is if you want some help, like if you just want to get to your goal and you don't want to like waste time figuring it out, if you don't want to like kind of spin your wheels, go and click on the link below, like partner with someone that's been where you're trying to go. I have a private mentorship program where I work with people individually to make sure they go and grow to their goal in the shortest time period possible, avoiding all the mistakes that I see people make repeatedly over and over again. If you want to cut out those mistakes, if you want to actually go win in the shortest time period possible, go ahead and click on the link below inside the description. I was going to take you to a link to book a call with me. We're going to look at where you are right now. Where do you want to go? Then if I think I can help, I'm just going to outline the process of what that looks like for you. And we can work together long term if it makes sense for both parties. So I will talk to you soon. If that's you, I'll see you on the call. If not, I can't wait to see you in the next video. Have a good one.